Welcome to the first in our series of Worsley Concert Band Musical Inspirations and I've got a very special guest today, a good friend and co-author of Women in Musical Leadership, Emma Horton. Say hello to the crowd. Hi crowd. (laughs) (laughs) This little series is just here to kind of remind all of us why it is we like music and why we like doing what we normally do. It's been really difficult, I think, hasn't it, Emma, during the pandemic to sort of keep on top of things, keep positive, and to to keep liking what we do. So how have you been staying musical during this pandemic? Yeah, so I think it has been tricky, but I think I'm always one of those people that you've just got to, you've got to find the positives in everything. And I think, fine, we were all put into this really, really difficult situation. And I think I've just, to, to stay musical, I've just, I've just reminded myself every day about, why I'm a musician and why I chose this career path in the first place um, and just reminding myself that like our work is going to come back and life will come back and just constantly reminding ourselves that this situation that we're in isn't forever um, has really really like helped spare me on even more because it's kind of like uh, and I've really I'm, I'm really philosophical about it and I think when when music and the arts do finally return I think it's going to be more magical than ever actually because we've all realized how much we need it so when it comes back i think it's going to be more magical than ever so i think just remembering things like that has really helped um keep me motivated and just made sure that i made music every single day yay every single day can never stop (laughs) yes exactly i I will never stop (laughs) never (laughs) so this series is obviously called inspirations so let's talk about a couple of your musical inspirations so when you were younger what what was it that really got you into making music and obviously choosing this as a career path eventually? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think whenever I'm asked this, I kind of, it always takes me ages to to think of something to say because there was never one, there, was, there, there wasn't one specific person or one specific moment that kind of like helped me along this path. There's just been a lot of really wonderful people across about a, the span of about a decade that have all helped me um, help me realize that this is what I want to do. I think there was kind of a moment when I when I was singing with the uh, the Liverpool Philharmonic Junior Choir um and we you know it was like it was the, it was my first um concert with them when I was like 16 and we were um being conducted by Vasily Petrenko and we were doing the concert with the um the Liverpool Phil and I think it was that moment that it was just making that amount of magic on stage. I thought this is what I want to do for the rest of my life and it was it was it was such a it was a wonderfully awe-inspiring moment and I think from there just having like really supportive parents actually just allowing me to do what I wanted to do and wonderful teachers at school fantastic professors at university they've all just helped me along this path yeah so it's been a really lovely journey oh that's really nice that's really positive (laughs) (laughs) well it it is me (laughs) I like it when that happens yeah yeah (laughs) So obviously nowadays you are a professional clarinetist. Uh, Obviously I know you best as a pit musician. Uh, That's where we uh, met. And so this is now what you're doing. How would you say those inspirations have sort of changed over the years? Has it become more towards one genre of music making that's really inspired you to keep going? Or is it just the diversity of it that you've enjoyed? That's a really really interesting question and I think for me it's always been the diversity and I think I've always said to I've always said to myself and to lots of people that what I love about this job is that it is such a multifaceted career um and you know the 21st century musician is very much one that builds uh, a portfolio career um and that's and that's the way it is and that's great and I think if you can enjoy every every facet and ev- enjoy every part of the journey that makes it really really exciting because then because you i don't know like you might try one style one one part of the job that you didn't think you were going to enjoy and actually it's life changing and you start you do that path for a bit and then you try a different path so it's it's very much a multifaceted career and i love all of it it's great absolutely i think that was something i noticed that i missed so much in norway is just the incredible diversity of music making in Britain. It's it's unlike anything else. It really is. It's amazing. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Like, yeah, because sometimes you have to take yourself out of it before you um before you appreciate that. But you're back now. Absolutely. You you need to lose something before you know what you had. That's yeah. what's that from? That's from some god awful rom com probably, isn't it? <laughs> 
So obviously our third question is give yourself a piece of musical advice. And this is obviously uh, modelled slightly on one of our shared passions of RuPaul's Drag Race. Obviously. <laughs> the advice for a younger you. What would you, what advice would you give yourself? The piece of advice I would give myself is to just always follow your gut. And that's it. Because there will be a lot of people that try and tell you otherwise. And a lot of people that think they know better than you. They don't. You know what you want to do. Just do it. That's a brilliant bit of advice. So I've cherry picked people for this little series that I know have experience with wind bands and you run a wind band as well. So what, if you picked a piece for wind band, what would it be? Would it be from the American tradition? Would it be English wind orchestra style? What a good question. There's so many wonderful pieces that have been written by you, but there's, there's a big difference between the English style and the American style. I think I'd have to go with something like, something really basic, like the um, the Holst Suites or the Vaughan Williams Suites, uh, suite, um, because they just, they are, they are everything that a good piece of wind orchestra repertoire should be they're just so good aren't they there's a reason they're classics yeah exactly exactly and i think and i think they were just so important for both Vaughan williams and holst were really really important for um the folk revival that happened in this country and it's really it's essential that we remember the the folk songs and the folk traditions from 400 years ago because it's part of our our heritage um so yeah i would give a really basic answer like the Holst and the Vaughan Williams because my, my heart lies with them there's nothing wrong with basic there's a reason basic things are basic it's because everyone loves them <laughs> it's like a caramel yeah. latte yeah it? exactly it's a good reason that it's good <laughs> it's because it's got sugar in it <laughs> yes excellent well thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and lovely. hopefully uh, to remind some of our lovely viewers uh, just how great making some music is. Yeah. So thank you very, very much for joining us. Thank you. And have you got anything to say to the people before you leave? Um, music's great and the arts are brilliant and we have to save the arts and we need to do everything we can to make sure that the arts are saved in this country. So keep writing to your local MPs, keep making a fuss because the arts are worth saving in this country and we can do it. Yes, we can. What a brilliant message to end this on. Thank you so much, Emma. And uh, join us next time for another little special interviewee uh, for February. We've got lined up my mother, who probably was one of my first musical inspirations on account of her proximity. And we're going to chat to her a little bit about some of the wind bands that I was involved with growing up directly thanks to her. So join us in February for another one of these little series and keep on making music.